Today, we're gonna to talk about video impeachments and how to get those set up in OnCue. Welcome back everybody. I hope you guys are all doing well given the current situation and everything that's going on. Uh, today, this is going to be one video, part of a series of videos that goes over video impeachments. My goal, I got a little bit away from me last time was to make these videos a little bit shorter so they're a little bit easier to digest in terms of the different uh, discrete steps. And so today I'm gonna make a better effort to do that, but I have to cover a couple of other preliminary things First, uh, for those of you that are just watching this on YouTube from the world at large, uh, these are video tutorials intended for the litigation technology class at the Chicago Kent College of Law. And, but I thought I would put them on YouTube anyway so that anyone can uh, learn from them if they wanted to. Uh, but I do have a couple of class notes uh, that I have to address first. Uh, the first thing I have to address is the grading policy. Uh, there's been a couple of changes. I hope you guys are uh, aware of it and following along. My understanding is that the grading policy for the rest of this semester, spring of 2020, uh, has changed given everything that's going on and that every class is on a mandatory pass-fail uh, system. So you don't have to worry about uh, GPA or the ability to be able to really excel or not. Uh, it's going to be on pass fail. So uh, that's the first thing uh, that I need to, and it's, I guess the main thing that I need to address uh, going forward. Uh, if you guys have any questions about that, for those of you who are in the class, please feel free to email me at any time. I have been receiving uh, the assignments from, I think most of you, um, but make sure that you are sending those in. I'll have timestamps from when you guys email those assignments to me. Uh, as the assignments start to get a little bit larger or more voluminous in terms of what you need to turn in, you can always upload things to me via the upload link that I've been sending you materials, and that's gtc.wetransfer.com. From there, you can upload files of up to 20 gigabytes or a total package of up to 20 gigabytes to me. You just need to keep your web browser open while you're doing that. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. All right, so with some of the class stuff out of the way, let's talk about video impeachments. And the first thing that I kind of want to do is I kind of want to show you ultimately where we're trying to go with this. For example, I'll have one loaded up here on my computer ready to go. And it might be a witness who is perhaps a corporate representative. And in their deposition, they might have previously, as we were going over their background, said that they're not on any sort of safety committee uh, at the company. And so they wouldn't have any sort of knowledge about certain area of facts. But then come trial, maybe in the direct examination, all of a sudden they're testifying about all this stuff that they had previously said they didn't know anything about, that they couldn't answer questions about. And all this stuff happens to be really favorable for their party what I do uh, when I get up for my cross-examination, I might start out saying, so today you're saying you're on the safety committee, uh, give them a chance to correct themselves. And then if they do, then that's all I have to do. Uh, but they might say, yeah, I'm on the safety committee. I've always been on the safety committee. That's in fact why I was hired to work at this company is because of my safety committee experience or something along those lines. Then I might say, if they're gonna not budge from their current statement in court. I might say, do you remember giving a deposition in this case? Uh, and they'll say yes. And at that point, I'll go over the evidentiary foundations uh, that I need to discuss a prior conversation that's out of court. I'll say, uh, I was there, you were there, uh, there was a court reporter there taking everything down, and there was even a videographer uh, that was videotaping the entire thing. Do you remember that? And he'll say, yes. And so I'll say, on that day, uh, is this the question you're asked and this the answer you gave? And then at that point, I would also give the citation to opposing counsel, say counsel, I'm going to the deposition, page nine, lines three to four. And, say, and then at that point, uh, if I don't hear an objection, I'll play it. Uh, do you not remember the safety committee? I am not, no. And at that point, I will then clear the video impeachment off of the screen and say, is that the question you were asked and not the answer you gave? And he'll say, yes and that's the perfecting of the impeachment, then I've completed what I need to do. Because um, it'll be hard for that witness, seeing his own image up on the screen, hearing his own voice, to say, no, that, that wasn't me. They might try to say something like, well, you're taking out of context or anything like that, but you just redirect them or just kind of corral them back to the question that you asked, which is, is that what you said on that day? Resist the urge to say then, uh, so isn't it true that in fact, you're not on the safety committee? Because uh, then that gives them a chance to now 
undo your impeachment and go and massage and talk about all the reasons why the things that they're saying now today are believable. You don't want to do that. You just want to leave it as that's the question you're asked and that's the answer you gave. So that way in closing, then you can then argue you heard from Mr. H earlier uh, during this trial. And he tried to tell you all these things about how he's on the safety committee and how he knows about all these things. But you don't have to believe any of that because when remember when he was on the stand, I asked him if previously closer to the time that all these events occurred, I had asked him if he was on the safety committee. And on that day, he said no. You leave it at that. And so that's the way that you set that up for the video impeachment. That's ultimately where we're trying to go. So let's talk about how we could put a lot of that stuff together uh, in OnCue. Now, before we get to that, I wanted to go over some preliminary stuff for today in terms of what everything's gonna look like. So when it comes to a video deposition uh, and what makes it a little bit more complicated is the way that computers understand videos and the way that lawyers understand videos. So computers understand videos as minutes, seconds, and frames, or hundredths of seconds. Lawyers understand videos uh, of depositions as pages and lines. And so there needs to be something that translates those two things. So if you looked at any given deposition video and said, where's page 138 lines 14 through 18, you would have to scrub through and kind of like figure out where that is, but there isn't a clear way to translate what that means. And so what you have to do is you have to take the video itself and the text of the transcript and sync those. And so you sync them together and it's essentially a process where every line uh, of the transcript corresponds or the beginning of every line corresponds to a given timestamp. And it just, there's software that you can use. You can do it manually as well and in prior uh, versions of this class we used to make the students manually sync their own deposition videos just to kind of torture the students and put everyone through that process so you understand exactly what's going on but these days most uh, depositions are getting synced by videographers and so we decided to eliminate that part of the class and save you a little bit of the trouble all the problem sets that you get for your finals the depositions will be synced for you um, and so you send it off to the videographer or your litigation support vendor, or some places can do it in-house as well. It just depends on the workflow at wherever firm you are. And then you take that new file, which is the sync file. The sync file has the information of the transcript and relating to the video, uh, but it's separate from the video file itself. And it knows where each page and line begins. So that way you can use software like OnCue, like Trial Directors. Those are two of the main kind of uh, software packages that are out there on the market. And you can use those either of those pieces of software to then navigate to what is page 100 lines one through nine uh, and do it very quickly without having to know any of the timestamps beforehand. So what does that look like in terms of the materials that I sent you? So I'm gonna open up the test folder, which has everything in it. Uh, I sent it, I think maybe a week and a half ago, I sent it in a link that you could download. Uh, I think it was the same email that I sent all the materials for the finals for those of you who are taking the class. Um, but in here, there is a folder called deposition video. And if you double click it, this is what it'll look like when you get that material or that content back from like a videographer, for example. Um, different videographers might do it different ways, uh, but if you don't kind of specify what you need, this is generally what it looks like uh, when you get stuff from them. Hopefully you're not asking for stuff uh, or your firm isn't asking for stuff on physical disks anymore, because that just slows down the process and adds the time and material cost of making a disc and then like having it couriered over to your office. Uh, so a lot of times they're sending download links that you can download uh, this bunch of folders. Uh, and it'll be very similar to the way that I've distributed the content to you for this uh, particular lecture and also for your final. So again, the way that I'm sending you stuff is rehearsal and practice. So you have experience for when you're working with vendors uh, and working out in the real world later on. But if you open up that folder after you've unzipped it, uh, this is generally what it looks like in terms of what you'll see. Uh, there'll be a couple of uh, folders, one for exhibits. If you've asked for the, the court reporter and the videographer 
to work together to take all the exhibits that might have been marked and sync them. There's an even more robust process that you can go through. Those exhibits uh, might show up here. For the most part, most people don't do that. So in my experience, what I've seen is that this folder is usually just empty. Um, there is a folder for media and the actual video files themselves, not any of the text, not any of the sync files, just the actual video will be in here. And then there is also a folder called import. And in this import folder, there is basically the same file with a whole bunch of different file extensions. And it's essentially the same information, that sync file information uh, that marries the video timestamps and the pages and lines of the transcript. Uh, but it, it provides it in a lot of different ways depending on where you're gonna use this. So you might be using this in trial presentation software, like we are gonna use it in OnCue for this class, but you might be using it uh, as part of your Docker view software or your case analytics software, uh, somewhere in the middle of litigation, maybe your months or even years from a courtroom, but you're taking these depositions and you're putting them into a document management or uh, uh, an electronic uh, case review software. So there's lots of different file types that are available here, but they're all basically the same thing and they're just giving you a lot of flexibility. This vendor file, you don't really have to worry about that. It tells you it's stuff that like, um, depending if they want to, they can kind of customize your viewing experience with like their own logos. It's just a branding thing. I don't, it's not really all that useful uh, that if you hit this auto run, even if you don't have OnCue, people can still view the deposition and see some of the page and line information. You can't really use that to then display it in court. So it's a pretty limited like free applet or mini app, but that's what that auto run is. And then here is kind of like the most commonly used file extension, which is .dvt uh, that you can also use uh, as well. That they put that, it probably belongs in this uh, import folder, but sometimes they stick that one out for like just ease of access uh, out in the main folder itself. So that's everything that's in there. Um, and at this point, now we're gonna be ready to actually go to OnCue, start working with this project file uh, and, and this deposition video and start getting it imported into OnCue. But I think that's one, I'm gonna leave it here, kind of give you the brief overview of where we're going so you could see it, give you kind of brief overview of the lay of the land in terms of what are we looking at? How are we getting this? Who's giving it to us? Uh, so I just wanted to make that one kind of like intro type of video. So we'll get into actually importing this into the trial presentation software in uh, the next video. <laughs>